it is my delight to be able to share with you direction. It's time for a direction with Pastor Errol Daniel, sponsored by the Streams of Power Ministries in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He will give me grace and glory. He will Thank give God. That is sufficient. Me that is sufficient. And glory. That's sufficient, Reverend. Lord, something seems to be going out of control. But contrary to popular opinion, you are in charge. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Stay tuned and be blessed with an anointed message from the pulpit. David's brothers thought he was a nobody. God, God saw, saw somebody, somebody in him and God is seeing somebody in all of you. Every one of you, you are important to God. Remove from the edge. Escape for your life. And let us go up to higher ground. Yes, this country, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may we not prophesy lies to our countrymen and say it is all right when we are not living the way you want us to live. Today's message will help to equip you. Stay with us for the next hour. Before we bring you today's message, here is a look at some of what took place at the Streams of Power Fellowship Hall at Rathamil over the past week when we had our 2018 Vacation Bible School. Okay? Okay? Yes. 
children. So Jesus said, if you do not receive me into your heart, you do not have any power and you are not my child. That's fine. If you are here today and you have not asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, it means you are not a child of God. Would you like to give your life to the Lord? Would you please lift your hands so I can see you? You want Jesus in your heart. they taught me about the armor of God. I remembered the breastplate of righteousness. I learned that it protects you from Satan attacking you and protects your heart from Satan. One of the verses I remembered from DBS is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I enjoyed it a lot. And next year, I would come back and have more fun at VBS. Hi, I'm Shikari's Ash, and I'm a kid of ours. It was fun being at VBS this year. I learned a memory verse in my class, ages 10 to 12, and it goes like this. Mark chapter 4 and verses 11. Submit yourself to... Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Akela, you know what? My best song this year was put on the armor. Put on the armor, the armor, the armor of God. Put on the armor, the armor, 
Armor of God. Here comes Agape. Agape can you help us with the teams of this year? The chorus put on the armor of God. Sure. Put on the armor, the armor, the armor of God. Put on the armor, the armor, the armor. The theme for this year, Vacation Bible School 2018, is the armor of God. And the verse to go with that is, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to resist the wiles of the devil. And that is taken from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Put on the armor, the armor, the armor of God. Put on the armor, the armor, the armor of God. Put on the armor, the armor, the armor of God. Boys and girls in Beckway, VBS is coming your way the 20th of August 2018 at Paget Farm. So I just want to tell you how lovely Vacation Baby School is. Remember, starts at 9 a.m. and finish 12 o'clock midday and daily. So come bring everybody and you'll be delighted. Again, all of you in Bekwe, the teenagers, everybody, I cannot wait to meet you at Streams of Power Bekwe at Paget Farm. Monday, August 20th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. See you there. Well, the children certainly had a wonderful time at Vacation Bible School over the past week at Streams of Power Fellowship Hall at Rathamill. Also, we had VBS at Streams of Power Career and Streams of Power Sans Souci. And as you heard from Agape, those of you in Bekwe, join us for VBS Monday, this coming Monday. August 20th will be at Paget Farm from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. daily. Now we're going to take you into the sanctuary at Streams of Power Sion Hill as we continue today's direction. Stay with us and stay blessed in the Lord. So glad I'm here in Jesus' name. Oh, so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. Are you glad to express this? 
Give the Lord a clap offering of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Love him, serve him, praise him. And I'm talking about Jesus. He asks um, one of his followers, Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? Three times. Do you love me more than these? Or the question was answered. And Jesus said, if you really love me, I give you an assignment. I have some sheep. I want you to feed them. I have some lambs. I want you to feed them. Um, Pastor Bullen, visiting man of God with us, will bring a brief exhortation. So I've asked him to then, and later on, I'm going to take it up with something I began some time ago because I have a responsibility to do the feeding of the sheep and the feeding of the lambs. To exalt Jesus, the Son of the living God. Pay attention here, please. Don't mind who is coming. The people will always come and go. Don't let nobody distract you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I'm saying something good to you. Love him. Serve him. Praise him. His name is Jesus. You would experience that when others walk out, he will walk in. An old song, and we're not going to sing it. I must have the Savior with me. For I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me. Anybody can rejoice today. I don't, I must have a brother, sister, father, mother, or friend. But I must have the Savior with me. For I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me. And oh, his arms are wrong me through. Then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. I will go. I will go without a murmur. And his footstep follows still. We did not begin the service with singing. We began with praying. And God answers prayer. Please greet somebody and be seated in the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There is a brother Sam who is with us. I'm, I'm a team member. And I'm going to share him. I, I ask him that is to share his short testimony. And we release him to go to another congregation. Brother Sam, I have heard you many times on the radio sharing. And I've heard one of our sisters making a boast of you because of last year um, ministry in another country. Do you know me? I visit with you all very often. And um, let's talk about old school, wedding song or relationship. Just love it. Take this microphone and share a brief testimony. And play one song, please. God bless you. Good morning again, brethren. It's a joy to be here this morning worshiping you. Hallelujah. My name is Sam Tamlin. Isaiah 49 1 says, From my, the womb of my, my mother have, you, have I called you. From the bowels of my mother have I made mention of your name. My mother said when she was carrying me, an old Christian lady put her hand on her belly and says, Name this one Samuel, because this one belonged to the Lord. I'm the fifth of nine boys and six girls. And when I became a young man, my mother wanted me to be in the Lord's army. But I... That's right, there were 15. 
<laughs> but you know when you're a young man, you want to go to, out into the world. I went out into the world for 11 years. I traveled to many countries and I got into some um, situations where it was very dangerous. But my mother was praying for me and the Lord kept delivering me out of all of them. And uh, the word of God said, many are, the, are the, the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I came back to Barbados after 11 years. And it was um, after I got my studies finished and my certificates and so on, I came back to Barbados and was working. One of my work colleagues invited me to church on Sunday morning. I went reluctantly, but I went. But that morning, Pastor D, I heard the old, old story. How Jesus came from glory and gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. And when the altar call was given, I ran to that altar and I fell on my face and repented of my sin, I accepted Jesus Christ in my heart as Savior and Lord. And he, he's been with me ever since. He, he's never let me down yet. Brethren, I'm 79 years old, going on 80 on 1st of November. Age is just a number. No matter how old you are, the Lord can use you. As long as you have a willing heart and a heart for the Lord, the Lord can use you. So let us go. I come here to blow the trumpet, to warn the wicked, to flee from the wrath to come. Because the, the word of God said, if I fail to warn the wicked, and the, the sword come and he shall die in his sin, he requires it of the blood on my hands. But I don't want that to happen to me. Amen. Um, I know I told you to be brief because you would have more times with us. And um, there's a young man who will be leaving us shortly. And he's been very instrumental um, in this worship. So I designate some time for him today. Um, hold a minute. You, you, you. I was going to ask you, but in part you said you're here to blow the trumpet and to sound an alarm. Hmm. I was about to ask you, why are you here? Touching 80. Who should be in a chair, according to some people, relaxing? watching things happen but it seems as though you, you're making things happen how do you answer that is it yes or no that you're making things happen i'm making things happen with the grace of god pastor d i'm making things happen the lord said go into all the world and preach the gospel he's given me a skill i want to use my skill for him when you use your skill for the world the world gets tired of, of you after a while and the one is somebody new something new but the lord don't get, ever get tired of you and he has a crown of righteousness for you at the end of, of, of it all. Okay, what song would you play for us? I've heard the old, old story. Okay, go ahead. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. He's tuning his instrument. You could use that.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please keep it hot, please. Listen, come back here. That's a lovely song. Amen. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. Victory in Jesus. Yes, 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 I wish you had some more time with us today. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Victory in Jesus. My Savior forever. Pastor Bolin, I'm getting help to take you to the next church. Pastor Edwin Bolin has been a pastor for many years and a team member of the Crisis the Answer ministry. We've gone from place to place. And as I said to him, when we were coming here this morning, looking down at Anna's veil, um, well, the, the Cyan Hill, the Cyan Hill school grounds. I would remember when Pastor Williams would turn the mic over to him and he would say to him, go, Edwin, go. Go, Edwin, go. Go, Edwin, go. And over the years, he has remained faithful to the Lord. To the Lord. He has remained faithful to the Lord. And when Pastor Williams was about to pass on, he said, Edwin, you cannot stop the crusades. And I wouldn't say anymore. And Pastor Edwin Bullen hasn't stopped. This time, he's leading a team to be with us. We'll have more times with him. I welcome you at this moment. He is he's, still is the missions director for the Pawi Assemblies. God bless you. You could go there, you could have it here. I don't know what you want. Go ahead, please. God. This morning we give God thanks. Amen? Amen. We give God thanks this morning because of who he is. And I'm glad this morning to... You have 15 minutes. 15 minutes? 15 minutes, no problem. It, it could be less, but not more. Because okay. I have somebody on schedule. Amen. Praise God. Praise I God. that, you know, are you against me for saying that? No, brother. Well, whether you are or not, you have 15 minutes. <laughs> God bless you. Go ahead. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I, I thank God this morning because of what he is doing. Uh, the great work that God is doing around the world. Uh, just a couple of years, I had the opportunity to be in Suriname, in the jungle of Suriname. And I want to tell each one of you this morning, we sit here comfortably this morning, and Jesus has given us a command to go ye into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. And I'm grateful to God this morning that since God, God touched my heart back in the 11th of July, 1976, 
can remember very well at People's Cathedral. And God ministered to my heart. God laid upon my heart that he was going to use me in an unusual way. I never thought that I would have been here this morning um, to share with you because of the many challenges that I went through life, um, sicknesses that I went through life, but thank God, God is still alive. Amen. And we thank him because he is alive. I want to share just a, um, a short exhortation with you from the book of uh, St. John's Gospel concerning the woman um, uh, at, the, at, the, at the well. That woman that really um, people sometimes think is a very, a very um, unworthy woman, a wicked woman. But I'm grateful that God takes pleasure in using people that are really off the chart. Amen. People that sometimes we will not look at. God is interested in looking at them and transforming their lives. And the Bible tells us uh, in the book of uh, St. John's Gospel, chapter 4, the Bible declares that this woman, um, she, she, she was on a journey, she was on a mission. She, she, she really wanted something, but she herself didn't know exactly what she really wanted. The Bible says in verse number 1, when the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Everybody say, he must needs go through Samaria. Okay, it was important. It was the heart's desire of our Lord to go through Samaria. And if you know Samaria, Samaria wasn't an interesting place. It wasn't a place that Jews would have wanted to frequent. It was a place where um, there, there was a lot of um, friction, a lot of confusion, uh, a lot of hatred, a lot of, a lot of malice, uh, a lot of dissent took place uh, uh, within Samaria amongst the Jews and the Samaritans. In fact, the Samaritans said that the Jews had no dealings with them. In fact, they called them dogs. But Jesus declared, I must go through Samaria because God knew there was somebody in Samaria that had a message for the people of Samaritan. Can I get a witness this morning? That there was somebody in Samaria that Jesus was interested in touching. Jesus was interested in ministering to. And this morning, I want to tell you the very reason that Jesus Christ came into this world is because he wants to touch people. God doesn't really want to touch programs. God doesn't want to touch chairs and, and pews. Jesus wants to touch people. Tell the person next to you he wants to touch you. He wants to touch you. He wants to touch you so that you can touch people around you. So that your life can transform the lives of others around you. The Bible says that the woman was by the well. Now, many a times we have heard that this woman was a wicked woman. The woman that was really of really low um, repute. But this woman was a woman that carried great wealth within her time. She was a good woman to one point yes it is true that she created problems uh, amongst uh, the men it was frustration at times but Jesus saw her heart he saw her heart many a times we look at ourselves and think we cannot do it but trust me when we depend upon God we will be able to do it when we trust God God will work through us to bring about his plan, to bring about his work, to bring about his transforming work in the earth. And hear me this morning, every last one of us that sit here in this house or wherever you are, understand this morning, Jesus comes to St. Vincent for you. He must pass through St. Vincent not because I am here, not because the team is here, but because Jesus is here. The Bible says that the woman asks Jesus uh, so many different questions. Jesus said to her, give me a drink because Jesus knew where he was going. Jesus knew the woman was thirsty. 
People in St. Vincent are thirsty. People in the world are thirsty. You cannot suffice a spiritual thirst with a natural a recommendation it cannot work anytime you are going to suffice a spiritual need it must be done with a spiritual entity so Jesus was offering her water water the woman came for water but it was going to be temporal look at the lives of people today in the world they are trying their best to fix their lives but their lives are messed up their lives are broken but blessed be, be the name of the Lord there is only one person that can fix the life of an individual that is broken his name is Jesus hallelujah his name is Jesus and he will do what has to be done in the life of a man or a woman that needs his help but what is interesting about this story is that Jesus didn't only minister to the woman. The woman was able to minister to the men. Understand when Jesus came. Jesus could have, he, because he is so awesome, he is so great. He could have spoken the word from heaven and save everybody. But Jesus came where we were. Jesus came where you lived. Jesus came where I lived and he reached us he touched us so that now we can go where people are and reach them and touch them can you imagine people looking at your life and saying you know if god can save him if god can save her because they know the type of life you used to live before they know the life you carry before and now they have seen change in your heart and in your life it gives them the opportunity to know that God can change them as well look at my hands they look new I look at my feet they do too my heart have been changed God have rearranged my life he have done something beautiful with my messed up life can I have a witness this morning he has done something in your life and in my life that we will tell somebody. The woman went and said to the people, the men, not the women, the men, come see a man. Amen. Come. But before that woman could have spread that message, she had to be transformed. When you are transformed, what happens with you, you will be obedient talk to me somebody if you are transformed you will be obedient to the call you will be obedient to what God wants done and trust me we are living on board time the Bible tells us that night is coming when no man can work what troubles my heart thereby is this that there are many people that are dying you inhale somebody just exhale and they'll spend eternity either in heaven or in hell what am i doing with my witness what am i doing with what god has given to me you heard brother sam sam said this morning he's going 80 the first of november but he is still carrying the gospel message still carrying the gospel message because the thing is is in his spirit is in his heart dare not say to yourself you can't do it you can do it I've learned a long time ago that if God gives me a mission, God will give me the power to fulfill the mission. I already know that. So the thing is, I don't say I can't. Yes, I cannot, but God can. The woman decided she was going to tell the men because she dealt with the men. She knew the ins and outs of the men. And the Bible tells us when she told the men, they said, we want to find this man who can be far better than us to give us the remedy for what we have. The Bible says they believe, the men believe because of the witness of the woman. Then eventually they came for themselves and they received the word of God. There are people in your district where you work, where you go to school. This is their final year. Their final year. They're not going to have another year. This is the final year. 
And God has given you the opportunity to minister to them, to touch them, to share with them. Brothers and sisters, don't blow it. I close with this. There was a young guy a couple of years ago that some friends of mine said to me, Ed, your friend asked you to come and see him. And I said, okay, I'll come and see him. And eventually I didn't go. Because the thing is, I thought I had time. The first time they asked me to go and I said, I'll go. The second time they asked me to go and I said, I'll go. The third time they said to me, Ed, he's asking for you. Will you come? And I said, I'll go. But it so happened I didn't. Eventually the guy died. And it burned my heart because the thing is, that guy was asking for me to come to share with him. And I didn't go. And what troubled me was, God, I'm, I'm wondering if this guy end up in hell. If anybody responded to him, to minister to him. And that thing haunt me for, for weeks. Because the thing is, I thought, here it is, I'd blown it. Only to hear a guy said to me one time, you know, Ed, calling the guy by his name, he said, you know, he was calling for you. And someone else went and they talked with him, shared with him, and he gave his life to the Lord. And I said, God, I ask you to forgive me because the thing is, I should have obeyed your voice. I should have obeyed your voice. And the thing is, if, I, if that person hadn't gone to the guy, that guy could have been a lost soul. Brothers and sisters, I want to share with you this morning this thought. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. It's important that we do it because people are dying quickly. And God wants us just like that woman at that well to be willing to take the gospel message far and wide. I've learned this and our pastor, Pastor Williams, told us over the years, he told us this, when it comes to souls, understand, money is not a problem. Money is not a problem. With the, the missions group, from all the way in January, we were telling them, listen, in fact, from August last year, we were planning to come to St. Vincent. Told them, listen, you got to raise your money. you got to raise everything. Because the thing is, we're going to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the people in St. Vincent. And all of them, all of them decided they're going to work towards that because you are important. The people in this country is important. Because we don't know if you will have another opportunity to come to St. Vincent again. But we have done what the master asked us to do. And this is why we are here. These next couple of days to impact this nation for the honor and the glory of God. That's why we are here. We're not here to take out anything. We love the, the Lord's work. We enjoy the Lord's work. Man, trust me. This is the greatest thing that any person can do. You think the prime minister got the best job? No way. Man, the child of God holds the best job. Can I have a witness? The child of God holds the best job. To be able to be a child of God and worshiping him in the beauty of holiness. God bless you. Take me, look, please, please, please. I love your obedience. Amen, brother. I'm an obedient servant. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sorry, I couldn't keep you for the rest of the morning. But the others and other places yeah. haven't been to carry over a month. But those who are set up to carry on, Amen. to my knowledge, they're doing well. Amen. Good, good. And I'm in touch with them. So you go and stand in today Amen. and be a blessing to them. Hallelujah. I don't know all of it, but it say, if I carry the gospel Come to the God. lost, <laughs> raise up oh, your yes. voice and do it. Oh, yes, God. Sing it a little louder. Praise your God, yes. Oh, yes 
see if you can find some people who are singing because we don't know it but we just know that it's important look for one or two persons who might be involved popped up again if if I can oh yes carry the yep. gospel to you. You have such the audience please. Hallelujah. God looks down and is being witness. Watch the audience. God looks down from heaven. Pray, Pastor. Pray while they sing. Father, we thank you this morning, O oh God, for your goodness. We avail ourselves to you, O oh God. We give our lives. God, they are not our own. God, it belongs to you. We are grateful this morning because you have chosen us out of so many in this world. You have given us the anointing to do the work. You have given us the power to do the work. You have chosen us. Oh God, you have appointed us. You have anointed us. You have blessed us. And oh God, I pray this morning you will breathe. Breathe upon your people. Breathe upon your children. Breathe on anointing over them oh God I pray this morning you will saturate them with the living blood you'll saturate them with your power you'll saturate them with your strength you'll saturate them oh God with the ability to go forth not by might nor by power but by the name of the Lord I pray father in the name of Jesus you will crown them with loving kindness and tender mercy may they advance in the spirit. May they advance in the power of the Holy Ghost. May they advance in the anointing in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray this morning fear will be destroyed. Unbelief will be destroyed. The plans of the enemy will be dismantled. And oh God, I pray for a release to every man, a release to every woman, a release to every boy, a release to every girl. Let the fire of God burn. Burn. Fire burn. Burn, oh God, over their spirits. I pray today you will bring resurrection life in the name of Jesus. Those things that were dead will be resurrected in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. Resurrect things that were dead. Everything that was stolen from them will be restored in the name of Jesus. Restore. Restore joy. 
restore peace, restore strength, restore wisdom, restore understanding, restore the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow in it. Oh God, release your anointing over this house where men and women are. I decree and I declare that there will be a breaker's anointing that will break every yoke, will break every yoke, will break every yoke, will break every yoke. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost be released. Lift your hands to the Lord, everybody, and receive, receive from him, receive from him, receive from him. Don't allow the devil to trick you this morning. Let the devil know this is your time. This is your season. This is your hour. This is your moment. This is your Kairos time. Receive from the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah, Lord. Judge them. In the name of Jesus, touch their children. God, I pray for expansion in this house. Expansion in Jesus' name. I pray they will run with the message. They will run with the word. They will run with the gospel. They will run, God, to bring deliverance to the captives. Even in St. Vincent, there will be a deluge of the power of God upon their lives to bring transformation. I pray there will be light oh god i pray there will be a salt i pray there will be like a city on a hill in the name of jesus i pray the supernatural anointing will clothe them oh god clothe this congregation clothe your servant clothe your servants in the holy spirit's power i pray for renewed strength in jesus name renewed strength in jesus name Amen and amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Bullen, for sharing with us on today's direction and for leading the missionary team from Barbados to team up with the Streams of Power Ministries and to minister to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. If we can be of further help to your friends, do get in touch with us and let us know. You can write to us at direction. P.O. Box 443 St. Vincent West Indies or you can call us at 784-456-1636. Visit us online also at streamsofpower.com. You can also connect with us on YouTube, subscribe to us there and also on Facebook. Send us a friend request and let us encourage each other in the Lord. And those of you in Beckway, remember to look out for the missionary team and the Streams of Power family coming your way this week. Yes, beginning Monday, August 20th, we will start with VBS for the young people and the children there in Beckway. Meet us at Paget Farm, Streams of Power, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. daily. And in the evening, we'll be conducting some street meetings. Looking forward to ministering on the island of Beckway. Thank you so much again for being a part of today's direction. Until next time, may God richly bless you.